Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how dare I say that Valve sucks. They revitalized PC gaming with Steam, one of the largest online game stores. While this is true, you do know that the great can fall from grace, right? Remember when Sega used to be one of the best game companies out there until they started making stupid decisions? Or when EA wasn't trying to attach itself to the wallets of consumers like a parasitic leech? It's time for me to talk about Valve now. I've brought them up a few times before, but now is the time to dedicate a video to them. After the Christmas fiasco where they said a DDoS attack resulted in a cached version of Steam popping up for those who logged into it, Valve shut down the store until they fixed it. They said that it was only for an hour to 90 minutes. But the dangerous thing is, it allowed people to see things like the addresses, email addresses, real names, and I think the last four digits of their payment information of those Steam users. The problem was corrected and Valve told GameSpot the same day in a very we don't give a shit paragraph and not posting it anywhere else. But it took Valve an entire five days to make a full apology on their Steam store website and explained what happens. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. I wasn't planning on doing a video about them this soon, but turn on Eye of the Tiger because here we go. Valve said it was due to a configuration change that caused the issue, but also said it was a DDoS attack as well. So I'm willing to go with that they made an update to their system and the DDoS attack confounded the update resulting in what happened. But it's the fact that they were tight-lipped on what happened and took five days to issue an apology shows that they really don't care. Their official Twitter and Facebook accounts made no mention of it and in fact have been dormant for several months months. There should have been an official apology from day one once the Steam store was back up and on the very front page. But even the official apology seemed very half-assed. Yeah, sorry we leaked your personal information to some guy in Russia or some stupid little ween kid, but you have nowhere else to go when it comes to PC gaming. That kind of hubris is what's killing Valve and their Steam store. I've actually started to prefer Origin over them. Yeah, it's run by EA, but it's getting to be a better service than Steam. I'm not sure if Steam is declining in quality or if Origin is catching up to them. But to a degree, Valve is correct. I use Steam more than Origin, only because a majority of the PC games I have are on Steam. Steam has very little customer service. There's people out there that have been locked out of their accounts for days to weeks to even months. And when they try to inquire about the status, they get no answer or a we're working on it type of answer. The fact that no one has sued Valve because this is only a miracle. I know I would have lured up and took them to court to either get my access back or a refund of all the money I spent on the games that I bought. I assume that they're making money. Why can't they open up a call center or hire more people for their Steam service in these cases? No one should have to wait around six months to have their account unlocked so they can access what they paid for. Then there's Steam Greenlight and Early Access. Greenlight sounds like a good idea. Indie developers can post stuff up there to have it voted by the community so it can be sold on Steam. But it's very abusable. People are voting for an idea, a concept, something they haven't played. It's not as bad as Kickstarter because with that there's no loss of money if the Kickstarter fails. Greenlight allows shitty developers to have games voted on and then sit back and rake in money from people who buy their shit games on impulse. Like how Lord Crest did with Journey of the Light. The game was claiming to be the hardest puzzle game ever released on Steam. It was so hard that no one got past the first level. Well, that's because there was nothing past that. The developer had the first three of eight achievements, but no one else got any. When people dug into the files, they found that there were no other levels than the first. The developer said that they made a mistake and they weren't a scam artist, but there's been no update from there. Eventually, Steam pulled it from sale and started offering refunds regardless of the time. Or there's people who just go buy Unity assets and repurpose them as their own and then push them on a green light. Like the people who take Unit Z, a Unity engine for making a first person zombie game that looks kind of like Minecraft and claiming it as their own game. They aren't even changing the game, they're just renaming it in the hopes of not getting caught. Early access is just as abusable. Throwing up half-baked ideas and leaving them in that state so people can buy something and leave it unfinished. Taking the money and running off. There is one developer, and I forgot who, but the game they made, and I think it was a city simulation game, they abandoned it. Leaving it in early access, taking the money they got from the early access sales to put into another game, infuriating everyone who bought into the early access that were promised a completed game. Even DayZ, it's still in an early access alpha state for two years. 
when is the game ever going to be considered finished? But at least it's playable and people enjoy it, and it's probably one of the few best case scenarios when it comes to early access. But then there's developers like the infamous Digital Homicide, who buy Unity assets, toss them into a broken game, and release them on Steam. Then they throw a temper tantrum when called out on their bullshit. Then they started putting up games with different studio names in an attempt to hide their shady behavior. They put out 20 games in one year and all of them crap. And they weren't even early access games, they were selling them as fully finished games. Valve needs some sort of quality control for Steam, because voting on Greenlight isn't working and is allowing a flood of pure excrement that would give the river sticks a run for its money. Sure, Valve brought in refunds and the curator system to keep people from getting burned on bad games, but that's just a band-aid over a severed limb. It's not fixing the problem, which is the lack of quality control. Even the Apple App Store and Google Play have some standards, removing games that are garbage. Let's not forget that Valve allows people to publish games to Steam that are missing executable files after downloading. It leads us to the question, what the hell are they doing in that office? How does that slip by? Especially with all the scam artists out there trying to make a quick buck. Should there be some sort of scan on their servers that host the game files for an executable file? Then there was a time when Windows 8 came out and Gabe Newell threw a hissy fit and started plans for Steam on Linux machines. Okay, I was with Windows 8 day one. It wasn't bad, just different. It wasn't like Vista because 8 actually worked and wasn't the resource hog Vista was. He was just pissed that Windows was making their own app store and it was going to be a direct competition with Steam. That's all it was. He didn't want the competition. Then there was the paid mod idea which was quickly shot down since people were stealing mods and posting them up as their own. Just like people who were trying to pass off Unity or Unreal engines as their own fully developed games and people were doing that before the paid mods ordeal. So how they didn't think that would happen? I don't know. Almost everyone saw it coming from a mile away. But that doesn't surprise me. Valve doesn't pay much attention to the going-ons of their store. Walmart knows more about their inventory than Valve knows about theirs. They let developers moderate their own forums, allowing them to ban people from commenting to silence criticism, and Valve allows this, letting skeevy indies trying to take people's money and run. With how badly Steam is managed, it's no surprise that they brought in the refund system and curators. They're pretty much saying that that is their quality control by getting people from the community to do their job to point out the good games from the bad. Valve has been said to be the best video game company to work at because there's no pressure and people can gravitate to whatever projects they want and there's no bosses. Well, that explains a lot. Out of the roughly 330 employees they have, no one tells them what to do. There's no structure and to run a business successfully, you need structure. You need someone to say, hey, get your dick out of your hand and get back to work. I don't see how they can produce so little in the term of results, yet have so many people that they're paying. I'm not saying that they need to work their employees into the grave, and if they have a more relaxed environment, that's fine. But at some point, someone should take charge and say, hey, let's get to work, or have actual teams instead of people do whatever they want so they can get stuff done. And I know they're not a large company, and that's probably the root of all their problems. Having 300 some odd employees isn't that big by AAA development standards, but increasing their staff would help them push out games or maybe fix some of Steam's broken systems, like unlocking customer accounts for them, or invest in some real quality control instead of relying on that curator system. But let's not forget the Steam machines. Oh yes, my second official retro rant where I said that these things were going to fail right out the gate and they pretty much have. So someone better pick up that phone because I fucking called it. The Alienware Steam machines have been noted to perform horribly horribly as none of the games are optimized for their Linux based operating system. Not to mention that with all the different manufacturers and different specs and expensive prices that they have for quote unquote good ones, they're making these stupid things only more complicated for the decision making of their target demographics even more, which is console gamers and gamers that aren't computer savvy but want to play PC games. These things were released and no one gave a shit and still no one gives a shit. After the release, people reported about how badly they they played games 
pretty much cementing the fact that these things were never going to make it. They're overhyped, underpowered, overpriced pieces of shit, and they'll always be overhyped, underpowered, overpriced pieces of shit. No one in their right mind is going to buy the more expensive ones, like the one that's $5,000. For that cost, they could build their own with three NVIDIA Titans in it instead of just the one. But in the end, Valve on the occasion says that they're going to do better, but they show no signs of doing so. Sega, Nintendo, Square Enix, Ubisoft, EA, Sony, Microsoft, and Activision have all admitted that they've made big mistakes, and they're trying to rectify it and have been taking steps and showing us that they've been trying to correct it. But Valve, on the other hand, maybe they think that they can't make mistakes if they don't do anything but just sit there. If that's the case, well, I guess I can't fault them on that logic, now can I?